welcome to Alpha Militaria TV. Thanks very much for tuning in once again. My name is Richard Saunders. Now, as always, I want to start off by thanking everyone who has subscribed to the channel. We genuinely do appreciate it. And perhaps if you come across us for the first time, you might want to hit the subscribe button and the like button as well, uh, as that would help us out. And if you're feeling really generous, there are another couple of ways that you can support the channel. There's some links below to our recently launched online shop and also to some products on Amazon that I use on a regular basis. Now then, we're talking about the Zabroya Cossack Mark II today. We had the Zabroya Hortizia Mark II um, on test a little while ago, and that was a really impressive little rifle. Very well made and incredibly accurate, um, especially when you consider it was about 540 quid. Now, the Cossack Mark II is a little bit more expensive, about 579.99, uh, and is imported and distributed in the UK by Pelpax. Now, as with the Hortizia, there are two or three um, different versions of this, uh, dependent on the barrel uh, and air cylinder configuration that you have. This is the shortest rifle. This is the 330 millimeter barrel, 200 cc air cylinder. You can get a 450 mil barrel version with a 230 cc uh, air cylinder, and you can get a 550 mil barrel with a 290 cc cylinder. Um, so this is the shortest one, 330 um, barrel, 200 cc cylinder. Now, in terms of differences between the Mark II and the Mark I, the Mark II has a newly designed regulator, um, which I'm told is a lot more efficient, a lot more consistent, which is always a good thing. Um, the side lever has also been redesigned, as has the magazine system and, and the magazine system is just a lot more robust um, on this version than it was on, on earlier versions. Now this version is 720 millimeters long overall um, and weighs about three kilos and the other versions, the longer versions with the bigger air cylinders got to about 3.2 uh, kilos. And um, in terms of what you get in the package you get uh, two, where are they? You get two magazines, uh, and we'll show you these close up in a little while. Uh, you get a, a sling stud swivel, and you also get two um, uh, filler, filler adapters as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through the rifle in detail, talk about some of its key features, zoom in on those key features, and then I'll nip down to one of my permissions, put a target out, and see how the rifle shoots. So obviously the uh, Cossack Mark II is a bullpup rifle. Um, bullpups are defined as, uh, as a rifle that is configured in such a way that the breech is uh, back from the trigger, or the trigger is forward of the breech. Um, as a result, very, very short, very, very compact and pretty light as well. Now at the back, you have this solid rubber uh, butt pad. Um, there's no adjustment in the butt pad at all. It's slightly curved, which makes it very comfortable. And it has this red spacer to finish it off down there, which is which is quite nice and tasteful. I should say that the stock is fully ambidextrous, and is available either in this black stain or in a wood uh, in a brown uh, stain as well. Now you have, although there's no adjustment in the uh, in the butt pad, this cheek piece um, is adjustable uh, by slackening slackening off this screw here. This cheek piece will raise a little bit. And it's quite nicely engineered as well. It doesn't sort of, it's not loose, it's ever so slightly sprung. Um, so as you raise it, there's a little bit of tension there, which is quite a nice feature. Now I have to say, I've obviously got this uh, in, in the, the fully down position and I've got a little MTC swap prismatic scope on here. This is the 10 by 30 uh, Atom. And that is absolutely perfectly set up for me uh, without having to adjust uh, that cheek piece at all. But if you need to, it's there. Now, the cocking mechanism is a side lever, very nicely engineered. This is one of the improvements over, over the Mark II and has this sort of brass colored drop down handle here, which is quite nice. Um, it's not sprung at all. It requires you to pull it out to a first stage and then to a second stage uh, to cock the rifle and push it forward. Uh, it works very, very smoothly and operates uh, a a 10 shot 2.2 magazine, 12 shot 177 magazine. Very, very smoothly indeed. On top you have a, a Picatinny rail, I think it's about 180 millimeters Picatinny rail. 
uh, which gives you plenty of, uh, of, of room, plenty of real estate to, to put your scope on as well. Um, and it's a good quality Picatinny rail. Now the, the stock has this big cutout here for your hand, um, makes accessing the pistol grip very, very easy. There's no checkering on the pistol grip, but it's nicely contoured. You can't really shoot it thumb up at all. So with your, with your thumb wrapped around is the most comfortable grip. The one thing I would say is that, if you can see here, this bit of wood down here, part of the stock is, is quite thin. That's probably only, I don't know, a centimeter deep, something like that, half an inch maybe. Um, now I've not heard of any issues with the braking at all, um, either on this or the Mark one, but you know, I would say that you need to just be careful that you don't, you, that you don't give that a whack because it is quite slender. Um, the foregrip, Again, there's no checkering on the foregrip, but it does have this uh, this groove down the side here and makes it very comfortable to hold. Um, the trigger itself is, is two-stage and is adjustable. Now you can adjust the, um, the first stage for uh, length of travel and the second stage for weight. Uh, but to do that, you have got to take the stock off, which is only a couple of volts or so, it's really, really easy. But one thing I have noticed on this is that the the trigger guard, hopefully you can see this, um, is plastic and it's attached underneath here by a screw but it's not attached on this side here and that makes it a little bit flexible. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not but that that will move around a bit. Um, I don't know why that is, it's just a shame because you know everything else on here is finished so nicely it would have been nice to have had a metal, a metal trigger guard on there uh, attached at both ends. Now the uh, this is as I said before this is the 330 millimeter barrel version um, and the barrel comes to about there and overall is shrouded for about half the length but you've actually got about 150 millimeters of, of shroud um, after the barrel ends which yeah, basically uh, acts as a silencer and as a result makes this really very quiet uh, for use without a silencer. If you do want to make it even more quiet, then there is a, um, a cap here that you unscrew to attach a, a silencer uh, to a UNF, half inch UNF thread. Now, filling the rifle takes a, well, Cossack, sorry, Zabroya will say that the rifle takes a 300 bar fill. Um, and, um, I think my issue with 300 bar fills is that most air bottles will fill up to 300 bar. So that means that once you've done a couple of fills, you are forever gonna be incapable of filling your rifle to its optimum fill level. Um, now I've been using the Hortizia, which has the same barrel, uh, same air cylinder setup, uh, and I've been filling it to 200 bar, and I've been getting about 150 bob on accurate shots with that. Um, which is plenty um, but you know if you want to fill up to 300 go for it you know but I would say anywhere between 200 and 250 is probably um, more than usable on this rifle and as I said before um, the rifle is regulated and I believe the regulator operates at around about 90 uh, bar so even at a 200 bar fill you've got 110 bar to play with before you start to drop off the regulator Anyway, I think those are the key features on the rifle. Oh, safety catch. So, you know, here, here I go, gonna moan again. Safety catch is based inside the trigger guard. Not my favorite place. Uh, you push it back. It's this little gold colored switch down here to make the rifle safe. And then you push it forward to make the rifle light. So those are all the key features on the rifle. Don't think I've missed anything out. What we're going to do now is we're going to go through the rifle in a little bit more close-up detail to zoom in on those, uh, those features for you.
Right, we get two magazines with the uh, Cossack Mark II, which is nice. Um, they're this very simple uh, metal disc type design, very similar to the HW100. And there's like a toothed side, and you see these sort of jaggedy tooth teeth up here um, on one side, and then the other side um, is more rounded. Now you, the jagged tooth side is the back of the magazine that you want facing back towards you uh, in the breech. Then the other side is the face is the side that faces out towards the muzzle. Um, inserting the pellets is very very easy. Um, all you need to do is literally push them in nose first into the into the holes. Now the 177 takes 12 shots. The 22 takes 10 shots. And you just keep going round, poke him in the holes. The good thing about this is that if you're out hunting or something, you've got, you've got a flat surface, you can actually do this one-handed. Um, just put the magazine down on the flat surface and poke the pellets in that way. Right, nearly there. And the pellets are held in place with uh, some O-rings. So there you go, that's your loaded magazine. Uh, as I say, um, you want the jagged end, the jagged tooth end facing back towards you, uh, ready to put it into the breech. Well, I've taken the pellets out of this magazine now to show you how to put it into the breech. As I said before, you want this um, jagged tooth side facing you. It's just a simple matter of putting back the side lever and then pushing the magazine in from the right as far as it will go and then returning the side lever. Now as with the Hortizia, you get two fill probes with the Cossack Mark II. One has a, a threaded end to it, and the other one is fitted with, uh, it has like a molded quick fit um, end to it, so that it will snap directly onto one of these quick fit um, adapters, like so. Now the other thing I like about the Zabroya um, the, the, the Cossack Mark II is like, again, like the Hortizia. It has um, a collar on the back, on, on the very front of the, the air cylinder. And it's machined to have a little stop just in here. So that means that when the, the fill probe, uh, when the fill port is shut, you know, you can't move that collar any further. And then to open it, you move it in the other direction against that stop to be fully open. So it's either fully open or fully shut. And that means that that collar's not going to spin round and round and round like it can on some other rifles. So anyway, with the, um, with the port fully open, simply take your adapter, put it into the, the port like so, and then give the rifle a fill. Now, as I said before, the blurb says that you can give this a 300 bar fill. Um, I've been giving it a, a 200 bar, bar fill, um, just because I think that puts less pressure on the internals, but I'd be quite comfortable taking this up to 250 bar. Now at 200 bar uh, with the Hortizia, same cylinder, I was getting about 150 shots in 2.2. I'd imagine from this, I'm probably going to get 120, 130 in 177. But uh, I guess we'll find out. Anyway, once you've filled the rifle up with air, obviously bleed off the airline, remove the probe from the end of the rifle, and then rotate that collar around again to close the port so no muck gets inside. Right, so that's all the chat about the main features on the rifle. I'm gonna nip down to one of my permissions now, put a target out and see how it shoots. Well, I'm down on one of my permissions and I'm very lucky because the farmer lets me do some uh, target shooting down here as well. Uh, now we've done all the chit chat in the recording garage. So I've got the Zabroya Cossack Mark II down here now. Um, I'm gonna be using some Air Arms Diablo Fill pellets in 177 caliber, 4.52 size. Well, I set a target out at 30 meters. So we'll uh, see how it shoots.
let's go and see how we got on. All right, let's just zoom you out a little bit. Well, that's not too bad at all. That's a full magazine, 12 pellets at 30 meters, a couple of drop low and right. And a couple, what you say, sort of straight to the left, but the main group's probably got, I don't know, nine or 10 pellets through a quarter of an inch or so. And probably 10 of those pellets would be covered by a 10 pence piece, I should think. And with a bit of running in, some pellet testing as well, that would, I'm sure that would tighten up even more. Well, there you go. That is the Zabroya Cossack Mark II. Fantastic, compact little bullpup rifle. Bang on 11.3 foot pounds, fully regulated, nice and accurate as well. Really impressive little package for what, 570, 580 quid. Anyway, I hope you liked that. Um, if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as well. It really helps. And if you have a few seconds, why not take a look at our store as well? You can find the links below. And if you'd like more information on a whole range of air gunning topics, check out our website, which is www.alphamilitaria.com. Thanks for watching.